What is sagittal imbalance? How to measure and correct it. Patients are often discussed or mentioned that they have a sagittal imbalance, or about some type of imbalance in the alignment of their body. And what does that really mean? There are normal anatomical planes that people use to mention different parts of the body. And these, these terms or, or planes are used by medical professionals to reference specific body parts in relationship to gravity. So think of these anatomical planes as imaginary lines or vertical or horizontal lines drying through the body. First thing is something called a coronal plane. And the coronal plane is going through the front of the body and that's dividing the right and left side of the body. And that is this very simply, let's say we look at the coronal alignment. Axial plane actually kind of goes through this way and it's looking more at, tr at trans transverse rotations. And the last one is something called sagittal alignment, which is looking from the lateral side, which is dividing the front and back of the body. Sagittal imbalance is when the sagittal, the lateral spine has gotten out of alignment with each other or out of balance or out of harmony or they're not equal. Now, sagittal balance looks from the front to the back in this normal alignment to make sure that everything is properly aligned. Normal sagittal alignment is that the head would be square over the shoulders, which would be squared over the torso, which would be squared over the lumbar spine, which would be squared over the pelvis, then over the knees, and then over the feet. If any one of these are not in the normal alignment, you have something called sagittal imbalance. Now, unfortunately, because of the compression of gravity that once sagittal balance sets in, more than likely there is something occurring within your spinal structure if it has to do with the torso and then that starts to affect everything below. So normally if there's any imbalance in the sagittal plane or coronal plane, it can cause different imbalances to the pelvis, knees, and feet. Now, the way you look at this from the front to back, we're normally looking at two main terms. First term is we're looking at a kyphosis. And a kyphosis is when you have too much thoracic spine bending or outward curvature. And kyphosis is if when we have a hyper kyphosis means it's too much. You're normally supposed to have a kyphosis in your thoracic spine, but it's supposed to be within a normal range. And that normal range, you know, is about 40-ish degrees. So you start getting 50, 60, 70 degrees. We can start getting increased kyphosis. And if you start getting increased kyphosis or an increased amount there, you can have a different um, uh, sagittal imbalance as a result of that. A lordosis is when you have a forward curvature of the spine, and that normally occurs in the cervical and lumbar spine. That's when the spine bends inward. And these are natural ranges that should have about 40 degrees in the cervical spine and about 40 degrees in the lumbar spine, even though there's some ranges in there. So the cervical spine should bend forward, called the lordosis. The thoracic spine should bend backwards. It's called a kyphosis. And then the lumbar spine should bend forward, and that's called a lordosis. Now, there are th there are main different types of sagittal imbalance. And the first one is called flat back syndrome. Flat back syndrome is when the lumbar spine has lost its normal lordosis and your spine is flat, meaning there's no curve in the lumbar spine, there's no curve in the thoracic spine, and there's very little curve in the cervical spine. The spine is very, very flat. And this will cause there to be a very com compressive forces can affect your spine in a very negative way because things are just too flat. Kyphosis or hyperkyphosis is when the thoracic spine has over exaggerated and you start going forward and we get like an anterior head and shoulder position relative to pelvis. That's one position of hyperkyphosis. The other one is when the pelvis tucks and the knees flex and your chest goes backwards like this, and then you have a posterior driven hyperkyphosis. So you can have an anterior driven hyperkyphosis and a posterior. What tends to happen is patients tend to go back forward and they bend their knees until they can't bend anymore and then they flex forward and that's the compensation for the problem. And that, so therefore we can have hyperkyphosis with going backwards or forward. The second thing is this what we call chin on chest syndrome and this is severe hyperkyphosis when they physically can't even look up anymore because their spine has gone so far forward. When we look at sagittal imbalance, we're normally measuring it on an x-ray, but it could be also measured, measured posturally as well. And normally you're looking at where the cervical spine starts on the side relative to the surgical vertical axis. And normally you're comparing it to where your, your tailbone or S1 align with. And these lines should be within a certain distance. If that range becomes too far forward or too far backwards, you can have either a positive or a negative sagittal balance. We normally want neutral. 
So positive sagittal balance means it goes too far forward. Negative sagittal balance that means it goes too far backwards. Either way, it's bad. We don't want to have you out of normal sagittal balance because out of normal sagittal balance will lead to other types of issues which can affect your spine, your pelvis, your knees, and your feet. So if you have sagittal balance, how do you correct it? Well, there is definitely no guaranteed treatment results because every patient is very different. But the goal is to try to restore normal balance or try to get it as close to normal as possible. First of all, you have to identify the underlying cause, meaning is there something that's more going on than just alignment. And once you rule out any type of other things and it's just alignment, then your goal is to restore normal spinal pelvic alignment. And normally this involves a combination of many different types of therapy, like chiropractic care, like specific, specific exercises, like improving core strength, like traction, like rehabilitation, home therapy, sometimes even bracing can be used to help to restore normal sagittal alignment to try to get the spine back into its normal position to get it into this healthy range so the spine stops being compressed as a result of gravity and going further out of alignment. We know the spine needs to stay in its proper alignment for normal function and optim optimal movement and optimal um, efficiency as a result of gravity. Here at Scotus Reduction Center, we offer proactive treatments to, underline the, to address the underlying causes, but most importantly, to restore or attempt to restore normal alignment so therefore your sagittal balance can remain healthy and normal for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.